Good evening, this is Kara with the Ministry of Encounter No More. I'm going to read and study. If you'll notice I have candle wax. So many times I will light a candle for more illumination if what I'm learning from any of my sources of learning I have returned to real books and some of the old ways like runestones. And I just had a lovely conversation in one of my places where I go to church today in downtown Austin, Texas with a couple and we just had a lovely conversation. They were equally both an older couple reading separate books this place enjoying their coffee and tea I was enjoying my iced coffee and reading uh, Western Star and doing some artwork that I'm actually gonna have to redo but that's okay I'm having patience with myself and that is what this YouTube is about it's for runestones um, and music today.com runestones and music today.com is my website and I want to read about Perth because I just chose it and here is my statement and I said this to someone very close to me and I know it's true this is in my um, little booklet that is uh, unicorns <laughs> but it's not a frivolous thing this is a self-discipline that I was glad joyful to see today after I was confirmed by an older couple who were very wise just like I am saying yes we need to return to books and I was telling them that I have 10 children and that it is hard for these children to actually re go back to reading books in this day and age and the dear woman was like well perhaps they they will do it and I said looked at her because this is electronic age I've raised all of my Gen Z uh, uh, are, are that's seven of them are electronic age the others are more of a you know the millennials, the three millennials that I have, and myself as Gen X, but just slightly older than them, we are more bridge people, and it has been harder for us. Let me repeat that. It has been harder for Gen X and millennials. So I would like the baby boomers to start understanding that. Wake up, and you start nurturing us, because I was just worked over by some stress in somebody's life, older than me, this weekend, and they don't mean it but I'm tired of being worked over because of things that need more patience. And that is where this, from the fires of what has happened to me, this is where this wisdom came out and I know it is true. And then I, I drew a rune as I produced this art. This table was in my dining room at my other house that my dad and uncle built for me. It is very powerful. We are doing a lot of our learning here. Here is my chalkboard for my um, drawing. <laughs> September's cat cracks me up. What part of me out is unclear to you because I am a mother of 10 children. I, I could, I, you know, it's like, wait a minute, I'm the parent here. <laughs> it gets very confusing with large family children because they help each other and a lot of times they're bossy with each other and they'll boss their parents too but we they do try to stop with us because they know we're the parents but they uh, get confused <laughs> when there's that large of a group of kids it, it's all right in the end maybe the parents get very tired so I want us to back down from each other I want us to respect each other more all of us in our private lives I talk to tons of people that have mixed families. In other words, it's a lot, you know, and I'll ask young people, you know, how many siblings do you have? And they kind of look up and um, are aware of our large family that just is just one family. And they look up and, and, and they don't know what to say. And the reason they don't know what to say is because they're afraid I'll judge them and I will never judge them. I can start crying about this. I don't judge people like that. I look at your life and see beauty. And they finally realize it after they've talked to me. But these young people will look up in confusion and somewhat pain. 
and talk about their blended families because their parents had to be divorced. I have people in my home on a regular basis that will tell me their stories. And a lot of times it's couples that have been married a long time that control one way or another, put expectation on, or it's brokenness because of divorce. A lot of stepchildren, or excuse me, what do they call each other? Um, they're half siblings, stuff like that. It's, it's amazing, you see. I tell them they're amazing. They believe me. Now, baby boomers, older Gen X than me, I'm 55. When are you going to start seeing everyone as amazing? Because I am tired of fighting your bullshit. This is what I said, out of the fires of the hell I have been through, particularly the last 14 years, I think our greatest trial of forging patience in our lives is patience with ourselves. If you don't have patience with yourself, if you've been trained to put expectation on yourself, which a lot of post-Christians, and particularly baby boomers and older Gen X and millennials will do, because they were trained that the only way you can be good is to do everything right and for God the Father. First off, God in all capitals, the unseen, the metaphysical God, is neither male nor female. I was somewhat crying today when I told someone. I, I immediately visualize the Father when I say, God, that's bullshit. That is equally not disrespectful to the Father side of God but how much we shut out the mother side of God, who is the Holy Spirit, but, but Holy Spirit can come through males as well, if, in, in, because we are all vessels, we are all creatures, we are all books, we are all individuals, and yet we need to walk in universalism. And so I'm gonna say it again, I think our greatest trial of forging patience in our lives is patience with ourselves. And since we've been taught to judge ourselves, particularly post-Christians, you're gonna deal with this. You've gotta break the habits because you're putting them on your kids. I have the scars in my life to tell you that I didn't do it and I am still hurt because I have foresight, I have vision, and I know not to do it. And I know to apologize when I did do it because if that's how I was trained. But I, again, I still have pain in my life. So I'm sharing from a place of pain right now. Um, these habits must be broken, but you have to have patience with yourself first. That is what rune stones will automatically show you if you will listen up, take a deep breath, realize that runes were thrown in acts if you're a Christian or a Muslim, because all of you see Allah as Godfather and you need to change your vision. It's God is not just Father. You're male chauvinists doing that. And you have hurt many people with your male chauvinism and your sexism. Not even talking about race here. And I'm in America. Okay. So I drew, because I'm a rune master, I drew Perth. And I'm going to read it. This is pages 103 through 104. I do not, when I'm doing something ministerially, I do not allow the reverse. But I'm going to read the reverse to you, and I'm going to ask you to please get runes. I would prefer that you get Ralph H. Bloom's runes in his book. Please. If you're going to listen to Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovering No More as a teacher, and yes, I have had other pe men, older men, come up and, and, and just put, hello, you're, you're a teacher, aren't you? And it's like, well, I'm coloring right now. But there are people in my life that you know not of that know I'm a teacher. Mortal flesh has persecuted me for that fact all my life. I forgive you, but many of you I'm shutting away because you went too far. So I drew a ring because I knew this is a truth coming deep from my pain and it will be a piece of my healing to do this book. 
and I'm going to read to you about Perth, just like I'm reading parts of the Bible. But I have announced it, and I will continue to announce it. When I read the Bible, it is my father's, and I read only to the King of Kings. Only to the King of Kings. The rest of you, as far as I'm concerned, you need to use it as toilet paper in your bathrooms because you are misusing it, and you are casting the King of Kings in a light that is false in America first and in the Western world after that. And America is misusing the Constitution, so you can just use it as toilet paper as well. You are astray, and you love it. Go fuck yourself, now. Initiation, something hidden, a secret matter. Perth is going to take you to a place to working on your private habits for yourself and so that you can love others better than what you're doing right here, baby boomers, older Gen X, older millennials. That's who I'm targeting with this. And yes, I have been targeted, so I'm gonna target you with love right here, using runes. You get your own, and let me see you love me better than that. 55 years, I got that to say. All right, I, a hieratic or mystery rune there are a few mystery runes pointing to that which is beyond our frail manipulative powers, which means you have to work on it. Just like you have to get up, get yourself ready, go to work, you have to exercise. This. Perth is on the side of heaven, the unknowable and has associations with the phoenix, that mystical bird which consumes itself in the fire and then rises from its own ashes. Its ways are secret and hidden, and yes, I have a phoenix side to me. And no, I'm not gonna talk about that. You keep this firmly in practicality, America. I'm sick and tired of watching you misuse spirituality, America. Powerful forces of change are at work here, yet what is achieved is not easily or readily shared. In other words, shut up about it. After all, becoming whole, the means of it, is a profound secret. On the side of the earthly or mundane, there may well be surprises, gains, or rewards that you did not anticipate. I can tell you one of them is going to be with Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovering No More if you know her. On the side of human nature, this rune is symbolized by the flight of the eagle, which is our country's bird. Soaring flight free from entanglement, lifting yourself above the endless ebb and flow of ordinary life to acquire broader vision. See, I didn't even read this and I read this when I told you that you need to change your vision here. All this is indicated here. <laughs> Would you say that Mr. Runestones and Baymax and I are in agreement. I think I would say that if I were you, America. Another of the cycle runes. Perth stands at the heart of initiation. Initiate some habits that are glorious in all of our midst. All of our midst. Nothing external matters here except as it shows you its inner reflection. This rune is concerned with the deepest stratum of your being, the bedrock on which your destiny is founded. Yes. I think our greatest trial of forging patience in our lives is patience with ourselves, post-Christians. Muslims who think that God is only a male with a penis in your head. That's batshit crazy. Um, even Buddhists could hear this. Atheists can hear this because you have a spirit. All human flesh is twofold. What you can see, mind, uh, mind, will, and emotions is the other side. Your body, your bones, all of that. Your spit, the tears coming out your eyes, but the emotions that brought the tears, the emotions that brought the laughter, all of that all of the emotions, all of your thoughts, the wind and the trees, what is unseen is equally a part of you. 
part of your destiny, part of your universe. For some, Perth means experiencing a death. Okay, you can experience, just like the Phoenix, you can experience a death experience. In other words, if you begin to decide to use what Kara is teaching you right here with, with Perth, you're going to die to yourself. The Bible in the New Testament actually talks about this, but I'm not going to point to the Bible right now. I'm pointing to runestones with very good reason according to the book of Acts and Joel and Acts chapter 2. So again, Christian theologians, fuck the fuck off me. Listen to me and put your doctrines down. You're destroying you still. This is Texas. Two weeks of school. 50,000 of our children are sick. Nothing less than renewal of your spirit is at stake when you draw this room. Now, again, what did I just tell you? You're a two-part figure of human. The whole Christian existence has mistaught you. I'm not saying the Trinity, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, who is in that respect, Mother. Holy Spirit is Mother, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But it actually should go like this, excuse me, because Mother needs protection, weaker vessel, and all that. Father, Holy Spirit, Son, who is protection, eternal. There's one of them, but there's a lot of Jesus Christ out there, male and female. Okay, the reversed. A counsel against expecting too much or expecting in the ordinary way for the old way has come to an end. And that is where I have compassion for post-Christians, Muslims that are struggling with your concepts of God, um, atheists, agnostics. I have, I have come great compassion because, because expectation is, is, is something that we are dealing with on a broad scale and it's killing us in spirit and again you already just said heard uh, Mr. Bloom say nothing less than renewal of your spirit is at stake when you draw this ring and that you're going to perhaps experience a death but it means multiple I, I just experienced a death cycle uh, across the last week it was very difficult I don't want to talk about it you simply cannot repeat the old and not suffer, okay? Wake up, America. Wake up, Europe. Call in your scattered energies. Concentrate on your own life at this moment, your own requirements for growth. Perth counsels you neither to focus on outcomes nor to bind yourself with the memory of past achievements. In doing so, you rob yourself of a true present the only time in which self-change can be realized. You may feel overwhelmed with exhaustion from meeting obstruction upon obstruction in your passage. The person that I happen to talk about that I'm struggling with and they were struggling with me is in that place. We are both exhausted, but we are sleeping better and stuff as we come into more deliverance from the curse. Uh, I'm speaking as a post-Christian and an agnostic when I say as we come into more deliverance of the curse. Okay. Yet always you have a choice. You can see this apparent negativity as bad luck, or you can recognize it as an obstacle course, a challenge specific to the initiation you are presently undergoing. For all IT people, you need to listen to me. I have a bunch of you in my life. It is not bad that you're a critical thinker. It is awful what you are doing <laughs> privately. You are messed up. Now you listen to me. And this is gamers too. You're messed up. Now you listen to me. You need to see this as an obstacle course, just like your games, just like your conference rooms where you're talking about all the programming you need to do, your IT rooms, okay? He's getting into a mess. Then each setback, each humiliation becomes a test of character. I have been demoralized because I'm not an IT person a billion times in the last 14 years. While I can forgive it, I cannot continue to be demoralized because of other people's 
batshit crazy bullshittery. Because you're not making any fucking sense. Yes, I'm angry. When your inner being is shifting and reforming on a deep level, patience, constancy, and perseverance are called for. So stay centered, see the humor, and I can show you, I will show you in conclusion, and keep your faith firm. Faith in yourself that you are going to survive and thrive even. Just like Baymax. Say hi, Baymax. <laughs> okay, so I will close with... Um, how I'm in unity with Mr. Bloom. I hope to meet him in flesh someday. You can understand that I <laughs> understand what I said, but I don't think you do. I said I hope to meet him in flesh someday. When things were really difficult, uh, this was July 17th, 2021. It is good I can laugh at myself without rancor. And today I saw a peppermint flowers for the first time. I, I had never seen pe and these were my peppermint in my bed. So do you see? Humor. You must use humor. And I can I will conclude with over the past four days. Um, one of my children and I had some hilarious, literally hilarious things happen. I laughed deep. And this today with that dear couple that I told you about, we laughed. He made me laugh. And how he did it was, <laughs> I will tell his story. I hope he doesn't mind if I steal his story. He has a, a dear friend who's a young lady that was checking him out. And, you know, we I took my mask off and, uh, as I was drinking. And they weren't wearing masks at the time either because they were drinking their coffee and stuff. And we were sitting in a little place. But we were pretty far apart. So there was no, and I'm vaccinated. So there was, we were being very wise, all three of us. And so, so he, and, and he said, do you know what I don't like about masks? And I said, well, and he said, you can't see the people's smiles. And I agreed. But then he told this story and I laughed my normal, wonderful laugh that I haven't been able to do for a long time. So I am in a healing process. So I hope you can take some comfort even though I have taken your head off, America. <laughs> he said, a, a dear friend of his, not one of his grandchildren, but a, a late young lady <laughs> was wearing her mask because she's checking things out. And she admitted to him, she says, you know what, when I get one of those difficult customers, <laughs> now they'll never know that I'm sticking my tongue out at them. <laughs> I just think that's the best thing. She's probably Gen Z. They make me laugh on a regular basis. Okay, have a nice week, America and Europe. Let's see, I picked on atheists, agnostics, Buddhists, <laughs> Muslims, past Christians, and defended myself. I'll pick on myself. I got, I got drunk in my hard thing. Don't do that. <laughs> I need to get better at it. Pulling out better than that. <laughs> it was at home. So see, I'm real. No, I do not drink every day. I don't even necessarily drink every week. So, fuck off thinking I'm out, you know, in any way or shape or form irresponsible because I'm not. <laughs> Neither is my family. So, fuck off. Okay, because you know, I'm a post Christian and y'all judge everybody so fast. I'm going to read it one more time. I think our greatest trial of forging patience in our lives is patience. Patience with ourselves because expectation is surrounding people constantly. I am not talking about politics because if I begin to talk about politics, there is no telling them to get better. There are tremendous shifts that need to happen and there are a lot of politicians and millionaires and billionaires that need to go to jail. Let me make that very clear. I'm not talking to any of that wickedness. Don't support it. Be a voice of change. I think of Bernice King, the King Center, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, when I say that. Please forgive me, Bernice King. <laughs> I use hard language. I'm a white girl, white trash girl. Okay, she's still in the Christian church. Love y'all. <laughs>